What up vigilantes? Today I have a very special gift for everyone watching. Today we're gonna learn about Dero, D-E-R-O. Dero is to Ethereum what Monero is to Bitcoin. Dero is the best privacy smart contract protocol in the world. As you guys know, I like logical consistency. If you are going to be a DAO, if you're going to create a decentralized autonomous organization, you need to be autonomous. What does that mean? You need to be censorship resistant. You can't be censorship resistant on a transparent protocol. If you want to have decentralized finance, well, what does it mean? Decentralization is just a buzzword. If it's not really taken in its totality as to what it represents, people say they want decentralization because they want censorship resistance. Okay, well, you need privacy for that. You can't be building on a transparent surveillance coin on a transparent ledger and expect for you to have censorship resistance. So when Ethereum first came out, that was like my, my one of my biggest issues with it has always been with Ethereum. And I'm talking about Polkadot, Cardano, Tesos, all of the competitors of Ethereum. My issue has always been that you can't be truly censorship resistant without having privacy at the protocol level. That has been my number one issue because that in itself has been their promise and they've never been able to deliver. So where are we left with Ethereum? Where are we left with all of these other smart contract protocols? You are left in a fishbowl. You are left with stupid contracts, not smart contracts, guys. You are left with stupid contracts. And what we want are smart contracts, not stupid contracts. Another reason, and this is something that I'm digressing on, but it's important to bring up. Another reason why I was never for Ethereum was because I was of the opinion, and I still am, and the market is showing you guys that my assessment was right, that everything you ever wanted to do on Ethereum Keeping in mind that Ethereum is open and transparent to surveillance and finance and voyeurism of all kinds, you could also do that. You could always do that even better on Bitcoin's original design at scale. Now, you guys know I play with light, light and darkness, right? I, I keep bringing up this theme, right? Of this was my my talk on uh, in, in the last Anarchapulco, right? You need. We're going to need. We're going to need protocols that allow us to have privacy in the way that we cooperate with one another. We're also going to need protocols that allow us to cooperate with one another with the world as it is. Not as we would like it to be, but as the world is. And as the world is, yeah, we have government. So if... so. Let's take the Bitcoin Monero example, right? BTC, Bitcoin Cash, and Bitcoin Satoshi Vision, BSV, are all we call sur transparent surveillance coins. Now, the problem with transparent surveillance coins is that their fungibility is in line with government law. If any government or jurisdiction says this coin here is deemed tainted because it was part of some illicit transaction and then that coin loses its fungibility in comparison with those that are not fungible therefore if you don't have fungibility one unit of account cannot be exchanged for another unit of account of the same medium of exchange if you want a transparency Honesty Ledger, which is what, in my opinion, is what Satoshi, Team Satoshi created when they created Bitcoin. They wanted a truth machine, an honesty machine. Well, then you create something like we have in Bitcoin's original design, right? That allows you to do the function of money 
in a pseudonymous way and also the function of a new internet, right? Like we see in BSV where people are using the Bitcoin miners as the back end of their business to create applications. That's great guys. But we have to remember one thing. We live in a world where unfortunately we have to deal with psychopaths. Psychopaths that want power. So as much as I still root for Bitcoin's original design and you know, I, I, and BTC and Bitcoin Cash, because to me, they're all Bitcoin. In my opinion, Bitcoin's a meritocracy of miners that is currently monetizing across three chains. I'm rooting for all of them. I know Bitcoin will survive. I'm, I love Bitcoin's original design. I love BSV. Don't get me started talking about that. But given the fact that we live in a world where we constantly have tyranny and the fact that we have historical precedent not to trust our governments, well, for that reason, we need privacy. We need escape hatch. We need to truly create an alternative system to the one that exists. That was the, the crypto anarchist motto since we got started with Bitcoin and crypto. In Bitcoin, BSV and Bitcoin Cash, unfortunately, as much as some will try to tell you that they are, that they're creating an alternative system, no, you're not. Because you, your, your fungibility will always be connected to the law of the state. And if you don't embrace the law of the state, the law of the state will embrace you. So where are we? We are at the cusp of venturing out and competing with government law. What does that mean? We are at the cusp of venturing into Lex Cryptographia, cryptographic law. Justice Ranveer, a Bitcoin developer that has uh, focus, been focusing a lot on, on open transactions, which is a protocol started by Ian Grigg, the founder of Recording Contracts, and a fellow traveler, um, awesome developers, guys. If you guys want to geek out on some cool stuff, that's something I want to introduce you, to you guys in the future. But if you want to get ahead of the game, look into open transactions. Anyways, he wrote this amazing treatise, Justice Ranveer, on, called, titled Lex Cryptographia. I'll have it in the link below. His blog back in the day was called Bitcoinism. In the Bitcoin talk forums, you may have remembered Justice. He had the Weimariner as his picture for the Bitcoin talk forums in the early days. That's him. He, he's a badass. I've known him personally, great person, amazing individual. Um, his dream is coming true in the form of Darrow. He shows us in his treatise how from the time of mercantile law, we have not had a way to interact and cooperate and resolve disputes with one another outside of government law. And that's kind of like the big issue with um, crypto anarchy and uh, the desire to, to have code as law, right? It's that there's not really any better technology for dispute resolution at this moment and as comprehensive as government law. And it is for that reason that I think that Team Satoshi was wise enough not to create Monero from the get-go, not to create Daryl from the get-go, but to create something that works within the system of law that exists today. Okay, but that's another conversation to be had. Kind of digress there. Still, still, we need to realize that we can't completely trust our governments. We all know that. The number one killer in all of humanity has been governments killing their own people. There is a term for that called democide. D-E-M-O side, demo side, look it up, look up, look up at, you know, we have a president. We know that, we know that tyrants seek power and then they screw us all over. So Daryl to me is finally the beginning of everything I ever wanted a true smart contract platform to be. 
I can talk more about this, guys, but the truth is, is that this thing boggles my mind. It makes me, I, I, just, I, just, I just can't, like, comprehend how badass it is because it is so outside of anything we're ever used to. Like, we can truly build on Darrow. We will truly be able to build things that are censorship resistant and completely private. What the fuck does that mean, guys? I've never experienced that in my life. I've never experienced that in my life. So it's, 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 it's inspiring and jaw dropping. It really is. It, it's alien technology. I call it alien anarchist technology. So without further ado, here are some of the main contributors to the Daryl project. And we just had them at the TCV summit and I just wanted to just, I was thinking, you know, I want to talk about Darrow, like I told you in the last video, but I really want to do it justice. Okay, this is justice. This is them themselves telling you about Darrow. Yeah, it, this is freaking awesome, guys. Um, Oh, be careful. There's a lot of scammers that jump into our YouTube channel and they um, they say, oh, they pretend to be us. And then they have other scammers that jump in with them and they tell them, hey, uh, go below. And yeah, this guy, call him on WhatsApp. And that's all. Th those are just scammers, guys. We're doing our best to clear the chat of that. But without further ado, peace, love, anarchy. Take care, guys. Bye. Greetings and thank you for having us. So today we're going to be talking about freedom through privacy and how it shaped all the facets of our project called Darrow. Um, firstly, I'd like to introduce Dank, Cryptoid and myself, Joshi. Uh, we are the founders of the Darrow Foundation and we are the more public facing members of the project team. Uh, together what we're going to do is we're going to cover many topics and we'd like to have some time at the end for any questions. Um, so if there's no objections, we'd like to dive right in. So firstly, we're going to have a look at the Darrow mission statement. Uh, so Darrow is a general purpose, private and scalable decentralized application platform that allows developers to deploy powerful and unstoppable applications while users retain total control over their assets with complete privacy. It is our goal to create a sound monetary framework that will globally safeguard the privacy of all its users and empower free markets to thrive whilst maintaining complete audit auditability. So the Darrow Foundation will support that mission statement uh, by integrating decentralized privacy systems and standards within the digital ecosystem to help shape a mo more open society by providing support for advancement of the Darrow platform, uh, which in turn will allow us for the creation and deployment of private decentralized applications, payment systems and tools. Uh, we also aim to support this with concise documentation and education along the way. Uh, one of the key visions for the Darrow developers as well is to have at least one full node or whether that be a prune node in any home running on something small and cheap like a router. Um, this is one of the, been the key things from the very start that the, the development team have, have pushed. So what we'll do now is we'll give you a brief history of Darrow um, just to let you know where we've got to at this point today. So the project started in December 2017 with three full-time developers. Um, the three developers have got over a decade of experience in cryptography and blockchain development, uh, so they're well experienced in that area. The project started out its life as a CryptoNote fork, uh, but by March 2018, there was a complete rewrite of the CryptoNote protocol in Golang. And the development team chose Golang due to its high degree of immunity to security vulnerabilities. By April 2018, uh, there was quite a lot of ongoing attacks on CryptoNote base coins. Uh, the Darrow network managed to migrate the, Colang, uh, the Golang code base without any downtime. Um, the core dev spent a lot of time studying how the attacks were implemented. Um, they designed a new type of blockchain that's resistant to 51% hash rate attacks and soft forks. In June 2018, uh, the core devs unveiled a new blockchain technology which was codenamed Atlantis. Uh, Atlantis combined the CryptoNote protocol with Darrow DAG and Rocket Bulletproofs. Uh, which Dank and Griptoid will uh, touch more on later on in the presentation. By January 2019, we saw the first smart contract testnet release called Stargate using the Darrow virtual machine and with smart contracts written in DVM Basic. Uh, the devs chose this language 
due to its ease of use so that anyone who wants to build and deploy on Dero can do. In February 2020, the devs searched for a fairly distributed mining algorithm that was able to reduce the performance of ASICs and other specialized hardware. Um, this is where the devs delivered Astro BWT. Uh, we did a hard fork to mainnet in March, and after managing huge amounts of hashing power and soft forks, the Dero block DAG resumed normal operations, and we are now mining with CPU miners from around the world. Moving on to December 2010, the Dero devs delivered Dero homomorphic encryption on testnet. Uh, it led up with many months of research and development and rigorous testing. Um, those who are familiar with homomorphic encryption uh, will appreciate there's an issue with speed. Um, for many teams out there who have been looking to implement it, have had this issue, um, especially within the blockchain. And all this has led up to our latest testnet, which was the release of private smart contracts and services. Um, all with Dero homomorphic encryption at its core. And along with this release of the testnet uh, came instant account balances where it's no longer required to sync the whole chain to see your balance. So that's just a brief overview of the Dero history uh, so far. So what I'm going to do now is pass you over to Cryptoid who will uh, go through some of the Dero features that's on offer. Okay, so moving on to the new protocol, um, Stargate RC2 we have some features we want to go over. Um, we'll go into some of these a little bit more in depth uh, later, uh, but for now we'll we'll get through the list of features and and explain more as uh, as it goes on. Um, first off is a fifty one percent attack resistance. Um, so the block DAG will actually rejoin chain splits and has been shown to be extremely resilient to uh, hash rate attacks. Um, during the Astro BWT fork, we actually had a large amount of unexpected hash rate at a very low difficulty, and the chain was temporarily split into multiple chains. But um, after some time, it completed settling back into one cohesive chain in a few minutes and uh, with no with no intervention. So um, it's shown to be pretty resilient as far as uh, pure hash rate attacks go. Uh, also, uh, DHEBP, um, it only allows for one outgoing transaction per account per block. Um, multiple recipients can actually be assigned in a single transaction, but with only one outgoing transaction per account, um, that eliminates the issue of double spending. Next up, we have block time. Uh, Dero has a fast block time of about 25 seconds, which allows for a high amount of transactions per second. Um, it also allows for quick transaction settlement. Uh, the latest release can handle about 750 TPS on a 20 megabit network as well. Uh, also, um, instant transaction settlement with the, with the block time means that all accounts are settled as the blockchain settles, so there's no waiting for change to unlock. Um, as your transaction completes the same block, it is confirmed. Next is the instant balance and, and wallet syncing. So when using an account-based model, there's no need to sync the entire blockchain and balances can actually be retrieved from the most recent block. So you don't have to sync your wallet anymore. You just request your account balance and you're done. Also another feature that we're utilizing is blockchain pruning. So the blockchain pruning is utilizing Merkle proofs and Graviton DB. Um, this allows nodes to verify previous information states without the need to store the entire blockchain. Um, this means that light nodes can actually keep a smaller prune version of the blockchain while still keeping the integrity of the data. Also, it's important to remember that the entire blockchain is actually encrypted and all blockchain operations utilize homomorphic encryption to maintain privacy. Which brings us to perfectly anonymous transactions. Utilizing many of many proofs and homomorphic encryption, on-chain analysis is basically stopped before it can begin. Uh, layer 1 transaction privacy, peer-to-peer uh, -peer network encryption, and encrypted balances, uh, they basically create a, a vacuum for metadata, which effectively stops on-chain analysis in its tracks. And last but certainly not least, uh, we have highly efficient mining with uh, Astro BWT. Uh, Astro BWT is actually 
shown so far to perform very well on modern ARM CPU architecture. Um, even versus GPUs when measuring hash to watt ratios, ARM CPUs seem to be performing very well. Um, miners have actually been successfully using mobile devices to mine um, at some actually pretty surprising hash rates, especially when you consider the relative low power requirements of those devices. So that's something that is actually pretty exciting as far as mining goes. Um, when, you, when you can have an ARM CPU using so, so much less power than a, than a GPU and still, uh, still putting out some pretty effective hash rate. So, Thanks, Cryptoid. So as you can see, the Dero has some pretty impressive features on its list. Um, but what we're going to do now is pass you over to Dank, who's going to discuss further on the core of Dero. Um, so over to you, Dank. All right, I'm going to jump in and talk about the core functionality of the Darrow platform. So there's going to be a lot of information coming your way, but um, you know we have a completely new code base, and there's going to be a lot of ideas and concepts to cover. Uh, so I'll try to make everything as concise as I can, um, and hopefully it'll be easy to understand. First, I'm going to talk about the Darrow homomorphic encryption blockchain protocol, or what we uh, call Darrow HE. Uh, basically, um, any sort of operations, uh, whether through the wallet and through a node, is going to be running on this protocol. If you're new to Darrow, um, you'll probably find, and we'll discuss this more, in more detail later, uh, that Almost everything is uh, transaction based. So we have the general transactions through each wallet. And then we also have uh, smart contract functionality that is also transaction based. So um, as a layer one solution, everything is running through the same layer and on the same protocol. Uh, I did want to start off uh, just with a little bit of information about uh, homomorphic encryption. It is essentially a form of encryption allowing one to perform calculations on encrypted data without decrypting it first. Uh, so basically the result of the computation is uh, as if it was decrypted first. Uh, so the outputs are the same. Next up is our account model. Uh, we had previously in our Atlantis release operated using an unspent transaction output model uh, that mimics uh, Bitcoin and many other cryptocurrencies. In that model, you are tracking the sum of inputs and making sure that the sum of outputs are less. We have instead moved to an account-based model with our Stargate RC2 release, um, which mimics uh, more of a traditional accounting system with debits and credits. Uh, in this case, though, uh, the two numbers are added or subtracted from one another. Uh, this greatly simplifies the homomorphic operations and uh, also paves the way for the instant balances and wallet syncing that uh, we heard about previously uh, with the help of Graviton, uh, which is an open source authenticated key value store database that was developed specifically for uh, our new homomorphic encryption protocol. So Darrow HE combines uh, many out of many proofs, bullet proofs, and the Sigma protocol. Um, so what it basically boils down to is the size of each transaction is primarily determined by the level of privacy. So in other words, uh, each time the anonymity set doubles, um, which is increasing the desired level of privacy, uh, the size of the transaction proof increases by a fixed amount. So you know, altogether, this creates an efficient construction of anonymity sets or rings and uh, they grow logarithmically in size. Um, so the end result would be compact and verifiable payments uh, for low resource devices. And this is actually where you can see some efficiencies in uh, power management and resource utilization uh, by allowing you know, mobile devices and you know, devices such as Raspberry Pis uh, that can actually operate a full node. Ultimately, though, this is all combined to achieve anonymity and deniability in the core protocol. So the next thing I'm going to touch on uh, are smart contracts on our platform. So we utilize a new uh, language called DVM Basic. 
and it's a contract oriented uh, language uh, for implementing smart contracts. Uh, it was influenced by a few other uh, languages, but essentially the key here is to make smart contracts easily programmable and readable, as well as uh, very easy to publicly audit. Our latest release uh, supports both public and private smart contracts, so we'll kind of go over the slight differences between the two. Um, public contracts uh, reveal the token and asset balances on the blockchain, which uh, can also be viewed by anyone in the Block Explorer. Whereas private contracts, they hide the token and asset balances and can only actually be seen by individual wallets. So uh, think of uh, tokens like cash. So once they're withdrawn from the bank, uh, no one knows how it will be spent or who owns them until they are deposited back into the smart contract. So once uh, assets are issued to the wallet, uh, they can only really be controlled by the owner of that wallet. Uh, so this is meant to prevent interference uh, from any third parties, for example, the smart contract itself, since the smart contract will not have any control over the funds once they're issued. In either case, though, um, whether it's public or private smart contracts, the smart contract code will always be public and available uh, for anyone to view. Um, on the block explorer uh, that way you can verify which code is running at the time and also can be audited at any time next i'd like to talk about um, services on uh, darrow uh, so we've added a new feature um, to transactions and we call it services uh, so essentially what you can do is you can send transactions uh, with an additional 128 bytes of data, uh, which can include, you know, like a URL or license keys or even a message. Um, but any wallet host um, can reply to transactions. And uh, basically what it's enabling are completely private services for, you know, specific applications or maybe types of clients or even goals. So it's essentially a transaction, but aside from the sender and the receiver of the transaction, no one can decrypt those messages. The services functionality within Stargate now uh, provided some interesting use cases uh, from our community developers. Uh, we had a development competition uh, called Dark. Uh, actually, it's called Decentralized Architecture Competition Series. And uh, we found some pretty creative hybrid type of uh, services and smart contracts. We saw a decentralized email system. We saw a decentralized uh, VPN and, of course, swaps and some DeFi and NFT types of applications as well. Thanks, Dank. So now you've had a, an overview of the Darrow core, I think it's a good opportunity to take a deeper look into Astro BWT. So I'm going to hand you over to Cryptoid, who's going to go into detail on that for you. So BWT in general has been an issue in computer science for, for decades. Um, and basically creating a successful FPGA or ASIC for BWT would actually be a great thing uh, for scientific research and, and society in general. So um, it's actually encouraged that somebody can can optimize this algorithm for an ASIC or an FPGA uh, because science has been trying to do it for decades. Um, as far as efficiency goes, um, while, while GPUs can be slightly more efficient than x64 CPUs, um, really their edge is not enough to make CPU mining obsolete. Um, actually, newer ARM CPUs, uh, like I mentioned before, uh, tend to have a higher hash to watt ratio and actually give anyone the ability to mine from lower powered devices, um, cell phones, other mobile devices, etc. Um, some examples of these. Um, so, an NVIDIA 3090 GPU, it can get 6.7 kilohash. Uh, but it but it uses 360 watts. So 
right there you're looking at a 18.6 hashes per watt um, you move on to an x64 CPU like a Ryzen 9 3900X you're getting about 2 kilohash um, and you're using about 105 watts so that that's 19 hashes per watt it's pretty comparable to the GPU uh, moving on to something like the the new Apple M1 ARM, for example, uh, you get about 783 hashes a second. Um, that uses about 20 watts, though. So now you're at 39 uh, hashes per watt. And mobile devices like uh, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 860, that can pull about 280 hashes a second uh, and using only 6 watts. So at that point, you're at like 47 hashes per watt. So as you can see, the, the pure hash to watt efficiency, um, ARM CPUs and that architecture seems to really be what performs the best with Astro BWT. And just kind of speculatively, um, there seems to be a lot of desktops that are even moving to ARM architectures at this point. So um, in the future, it's very possible that, that more and more ARM architecture is in the hands of everyday consumers um, outside of mobile devices. So that, that looks good for, for future decentralization as well. Also, uh, just want to touch on a few more things here. Um, the TLS encrypted P2P network um, is also a very unique feature to Dero. Uh, there, there's no central authority for the, for the TLS certificates. They're all self-signed certificates by the nodes themselves. Um, this prevents network packet sniffing. Um, it also reduces the amount of metadata available to attackers in general, so smaller attack surface is always better. And also the, the newest release has, uh, has reduced the bandwidth requirements to about a sixth of the previous release. So this is good for emerging markets and areas that might not have access to high bandwidth. Another quick point uh, I want to touch on here is uh, the, the change to the total supply and emission. Um, so currently with the Atlantis release, which is based on CryptoNote, there is the standard 18.4 million uh, supply plus an infinite tail emission. Um, this is going to be changing to uh, 20.4 million, but it's going to be a hard cap supply. Also, the emission is going to be changing from a steadily adjusting curve to a halving, uh, more like Bitcoin with the block rewards. Um, the emission rate will remain as close to the current schedule as possible, um, so there really won't be any difference in the circulating supply or how fast that is reached, but once the 20.4 million cap is reached, emission will stop. Thanks Crypto for that explanation. So what's next for Darrow then? So one thing we all know is that quantum computers with enough processing power is enough to unravel most of the cryptography used on the modern internet. And um, we also, over the next 10 years, quantum computers have become become more widely available. Um, so the majority, or if not all, crypto projects need to focus on quantum proofing, uh, which is why Dero has officially added it as a roadmap item. It is going to be uh, a good area of focus and research and development for the foundation of the development team. Um, so yeah, it's something we're happy to, to, to introduce to our roadmap. Alongside that, also, education has always been on our list. Um, we know we've still got a lot of work to do with the documentation to help and support people build on top of Dero. Um, it's been very challenging to get it all completed at the stage to where we want it. Um, that's mainly due to the, the great advancements in the tech that the devs have delivered. Um, along with education, we also want to continue our outreach work with universities and developers um, and look to the possibility of the Dero Foundation supporting uh, other developers with with grants in the future so um so that's something to, to watch this space on also to coincide with the mainnet release we'll have a new dart competition uh, which comes with a Dero reward um that's going to launch with mainnet and if you want to have a look into that um you can see some previous dart competitions that we ran on testnet um but this is an open invitation to to those who love to build or if it's, if it's your first time uh, please come along and, and give it a go and, and let us know what you think. So that wraps up our presentation for today. Uh, we do appreciate there's a lot of information to take on board. 
Um, so if you guys want to uh, join any of our social channels, if you scan the QR code on the screen at the moment, that'll give you a link to, to all of the social channels. And feel free to reach out to, to any of us, uh, ask any questions you may have. Um, and chat with our, our community. That they've got an awesome community over here. So um, please do obviously come and say hello um, and, and join. But we thank you again for the invite and appreciate your time. And we look forward to any questions that come after this. Thank you.